Welcome back to Awakening Reformation, where Reformation awakens now. My name is Grant. With me tonight is my beautiful wife, the Weaker Vessel. Hello, everyone. And with us again is our guests, Nick and Sam. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Very well. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about Awakening Reformation, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can email us, awakeningreformation at gmail.com. Please share and like our content. You can go on iTunes also, leave us a review, rate us as well. That would help us to get the content out. We'd really appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to truck along with our mini-series on the family with our guests, Nick and Sam. We will be doing part two, talking about parenting. So last episode, we talked about marriage, the definition of it, and what it looks like, and even how Jesus, as our Redeemer, redeems marriage. So if you missed that one, go back an episode, and tonight... We're going to talk about parenting. I know I already said that. We'll say it again. This was a listener request, actually, to talk about parenting. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. We had to find the right parents to we're talk the, about this We're thing. the perfect parents. <laughs> Just kidding. That's why you're on our show. <laughs> Started hanging out with Nick and Samantha, and we're like, look very finally, hard. perfect parents to have on the show. I think you just grabbed the first ones you found. <laughs> we know how to pick them. <laughs> and just like the Bible. God brought the animals to Noah... He also brought us the perfect parents. We're not calling you guys animals. Sorry, maybe that was a bad analogy. (laughs) (laughs) Every analogy breaks down. Gosh dang it. Nick and Sam, are you even parents? Yes, we have four beautiful daughters. We sure do. Aaliyah, Isabella, (laughs) Nora, and Sayla. So nine, seven, six, and almost five more. Any more on the way? (laughs) Yes, we would like more children. We uh, hope to be blessed with more. That would be great. Gotta fill that quiver. That's right. We really, we really also need a new van to fill them with. <laughs> yeah. If you're trying yeah. to donate, hit us up on Twitter. Our address is. I'm just kidding. Anyone's got a 15 passenger van? <laughs> we'll take it. Y'all need. Y'all need to get the rid of. The carriages are willing to be fruitful and multiply. Anyone All you to... have to do is provide the means. I'm just trying to be scriptural. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can email us also at awakeningreformation@gmail.com. We're trying to build a women's national soccer team. We are. There are four girls right now, and they all love soccer. <laughs> they do. They all love soccer. Uh, we are a soccer even if they didn't like it, they're family. gonna watch it. That's right. It's a requirement to be in our family. Yeah, it's God. It's God's sport. <laughs> do they even know if there's any other sports in the world? No, probably not. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they don't need to. <laughs> they watched curling the other night and were very confused, and I couldn't explain it to yeah, them. Yeah, the Olympics are on, and I don't understand curling. At Everyone all. is confused. There's I don't like, think anyone understands. I know curling. it's intense. I'm yeah. like, you're intense with that broom the, or whatever you call they it. They were yelling, mm. and there's somebody furiously mm. cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. With their little broom. <laughs> I don't know how they keep score. But I can't not watch. I can't. You know. Train wreck. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if a Viking was a parent and and you know and, and had snow and got saved, I don't know what snow has to do with it. But got saved. What does the Bible say about parenting? <laughs> you got caught with a better intro. <laughs> a little Segway tiny genius. Viking nailed it. Babies. Nailed that segue. Little Norseman. <laughs> Covenant Norseman. <laughs> Covenant Norse people. You've lost it. You got to get this back, baby. <laughs> All right, so parenting. Obviously, we talked about marriage, and there's probably a little a little ditty we sing as a kid, right? Uh, marriage comes first in the Bible, and then the command is to be fruitful and multiply, have kids. So again, with any biblical topic, we go back to the beginning. We start from the beginning and see how God has communicated his word to us with any topic. From the very beginning in the creation mandate to be fruitful and multiply, we see God's command to, to reproduce. Create image bearers. Yeah, mm-hmm. first 
Of course, this happened with Adam and Eve, who were married by God. It was the first marriage there. Through Scripture, we see that, help me out here, one of the goals or purposes of getting married to is to procreate, to continue to create image bearers, which we talked about a little bit in the marriage episode. But right off the bat, in the culture and day and age that we live in, a lot of people will talk about kids that are born out of wedlock or out of marriage. We wanted to just make a note and say that having children is still part of God's ordained purpose. We believe in the sovereignty of God in all things. And so even children born out of wedlock are part of his ordained purpose. Not that that is his ideal. Mm -hmm. Not that that is his ideal. But they are a blessing. I mean, mm-hmm. the Bible doesn't give qualifications to a children being a blessing. It just says that they are. Mm-hmm. And we Absolutely. should see them as such. Even if born out of wedlock, um, they are a blessing from God. And that event is still ordained by God for his purposes. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we don't know at that moment what it is. But we should never think something slipped through God's hands mm-hmm. and happened unbeknownst to him. So obviously, it's commanded to have kids. And I think we'll get into some questions about uh, about that later going in deeper about the command to have kids. The first place in the Bible that we get a real good description, I guess, of of parenting that, that God wants us to do is in Deuteronomy 6. What's Deuteronomy 6, babe? <laughs> that would be the Shema. How's that sound? <laughs> in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew. <laughs> Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Melchuto Le'olam Vaed. Wow, that was beautiful. That I is... couldn't have done that better myself, man. <laughs> we know, that's why we had her do it. Yeah. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 7 states, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, and a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. So most scholars will say Deuteronomy is like a couple sermons, really, that Moses gave to the people. And it's taken from the Septuagint, just meaning second law. And Moses is kind of reiterating the law and expounding on some parts of it. But really it's like a sermon that he's giving to the people. And this is how he starts. The purpose is that you fear the Lord, you and your son and your son's sons, Right away, we see a family purpose in passing on these commandments that the law has given. And then we're going to mainly focus on verses 6 and 7, even though we'll refer back to other ones. Right away, we see the like four descriptions of when and where you are supposed to teach these things. These things being God's law, all of his commandments of who he is and what he requires of us. What are those, you guys? What is Moses saying here? When and where do we teach our kids these things? I was going to say everywhere because it says in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. Mm-hmm. So let's take the first two, right? So you break it down. When you're in your house, when you, sit when you walk house, by the way. When you walk by the way. So Erica made a good point yesterday. We were talking about this and how they're actually like verbs, right? Mm-hmm. Sit and walk is like something mm-hmm. you do. So it is an action or a continuous well, action. Well, lying down and rising too. In your house, and then everything else. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, when you wake up and go to bed, when you're either awake or asleep. Yeah. Uh, it's like, whether you're in your house, you're not out of your house, that covers everything. And mm-hmm. then, when you're awake or you're not awake, that covers it's everything. Everything. Right? everything. Mm-hmm. Or day or night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 24-7. Yeah. So, this automatically shoots down only one day. We, like, go to church, and, like, that's where we get our God for the week or whatever. Mm-hmm. This institutes a daily acknowledgement and devotion to god and a learning well of not him just daily but like constantly throughout, throughout the, day. the day yeah yeah exactly not just your quiet time in the morning and then you forget about or it or two hours after after they get off the bus like that's not gonna be sufficient yeah god knew that right so he says hey this is when you talk about me all the time and everywhere <laughs> all the time <laughs> you're mm-hmm. gonna need it god knows what we need better than we do mm-hmm. so practically 
what does that look like? In our lives, what that looks like is we homeschool mm -hmm. because it's really hard to raise your children in a, with a Christian worldview and a knowledge of the scriptures when they spend so many C hours in a desk at school. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when they get home, it's like, what'd you learn today? And, you know, kids are just like, oh, nothing. So it has to be a daily regiment to where they're daily getting the scriptures. And we're not just like Grant said, we're not just taking them to church for two hours on the weekend and expecting that to develop a Christian worldview within them. We also pray with them, teach them the doxology. Uh, we used to go through, when they were younger, we used to go through the Jesus Storybook uh, Bible, mm -hmm. which is a really cool illustration. Mm -hmm. book that points to jesus points to jesus in every single story so to speak that you right. read right that's yeah, a really good helpful tool absolutely for kids so for you being the mom who stays at home because you work nick uh what are some practical tips you have for maybe a mom out there who's got a bunch of babies under tow i feel like one of the most practical tips is bringing back um everything to the scriptures when they I, we have four girls we mentioned that when mm -hmm. they are fighting because they're so close in age and we have a small house so we're close in proximity <laughs> when they are fighting and not being kind to each other we bring it back to the scripture well why be kind to each other you yeah, know why good. why do i need to forgive my sister when i'm really mad at her right now you know and sometimes it seems trivial as a mom like just get along you know yeah. but i have to make myself stop and say no they need to be reminded of mm -hmm. scriptural truth and why should I forgive? Why should I be kind? All of those things. And I feel like that's been really, really helpful in training up our children. Yeah, like that just happened the other day mm -hmm. where one of the sisters was very mean to the other sister. And so Samantha found a verse about kindness and made them all learn the verse. Yep, they and all memorized the verse and did copy work. What mm -hmm. I thought was really cool is you also said, use your artistic abilities to paint what kindness looks like. And mm -hmm. they just made these really cool like right. pictures of what kindness meant to them. A testament that they got it. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, also this too, is love, this is kindness. Exactly. And I also cool. didn't want it to seem like, even though it was a punishment, that... They didn't, I didn't want them to view the scripture as also punishment. Right. Like here, every yeah. time you do something wrong, I'm going to make you write this yeah. verse 25 times until right. you're nice, you yeah. know? I wanted them to get it in a tangible way. Mm -hmm. And I think they really enjoyed it. By the end of the time, everyone was having a great time. They were panting. They were playing nice to each other. And they know the verse. And we have already had to remind them multiple times <laughs> to be kind. Right, and yeah. remember when we wrote that verse? And they'll stop and say, yeah, we do remember. Yeah. And not saying, you know, that there haven't been times where, we, where we've had to go back over that. But I think it, I think it worked. That's good. So I remember being in, in Bible college before I was even married and reading this and just thinking how, how cool that was. And I was like, that is how I want to raise my kids. I was already such a theology Bible nerd and love talking about the Bible all the time anyway. And I was like, sweet, I'm commanded to do that with my kids. And practically for us, I mean, it really is just talking to them all throughout the day, like mm -hmm. podcasts that we listen to. Absolutely. We put it on when they're around. We don't try to like, oh, they won't get it. So we don't share it with them. We try to explain it to them in ways that they would understand. We pray in the morning. I start off the day with, you know, quoting a psalm with them that they respond back with. It's really fun and fun for them to kind of give the day to the Lord. Started doing Jesus Storybook Bible when they mm -hmm. were young, which was really good for them to understand. Because I really, we really wanted them to understand the meta narrative of the Bible, that mm -hmm. it's all about Jesus and every story that you're going to learn, mm -hmm. whether it be Abraham, David, or whatever, actually is about, you know, Jesus and how everything right. ties into the greater story of redemption. So that was really good. And then lately I've done... Well, you did cate catechism. Uh, I was going to have you guys started the catechisms yet? Um, you did that before you became Presbyterian. I mean, Lila yeah, was, true. I think, like two years old, and she could respond back. The chief end of yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> the chief end of man. Yeah. Right. Taught them the greatest commandment. And, so, and just like teaching them basic truths about God, about the Bible and the scripture. Because mm -hmm. then when you do discipline, you know, if they understand right away that our chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Mm -hmm. Now when you say be kind... And you give them the why, you say, well, it glorifies God. Absolutely. And remember, that's your number one purpose in life is to do this. That's right. So no matter what discipline you do, you know, even though, because I said so, is a legitimate answer. Right, because they need to be obedient. We, we do want to make sure our kids are not growing up being legalistic or moralistic, just obeying commands for the sake of the command. 
but getting to the heart of the matter and getting them to a, a deeper understanding of why we obey these things. Well, it's because to glorify God. Mm -hmm.